WCLN 1170 Radio and Star Communications Channel 16 proudly present The We Should Know Show, an upbeat, informative look at people, places, and issues facing our community. This education-based analysis of issues will remain positive and informative. Now, here's your host, J.W. Simmons, as we consider closely what we should know. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We should know it's on there. I want to thank you for being with us today. We're coming to you on site from the History Museum right here in Sampson County, Clinton, North Carolina. We're talking about a subject that's not only informative, historical, educational, but it's the North Carolina Grange. And the North Carolina Grange has a huge responsibility and impact in rural communities in North Carolina and has been doing that since uh, 1929. Our guest today is Ronald Ennis. Ronald, I wanted to start with you first, being the most knowledgeable, wisdom-oriented person here. Notice how I'm ladling that out and making a big deal out of it, but you're the chaplain and referred to as the senior representative of the Mingo Grange. And I'm, I'm trying to think why they put that senior thing on there. I do not know. So. They call me the great white father. That'll work. That, that works just as well. And so, Wayne, I want to go for you now, Wayne Wrench. Um, well, now, Wayne's been around quite a while as well, you know what I'm saying? So, Wayne, um, you are now not only the um, with the Mingo uh, Grange, but you handle a lot of the activities there. Um, you work in Cumberland County, but you've been instrumental in helping bring that Mingo Grange together. Am I correct? Somewhat. Yes. Wait, waiting to hear more from you. Patrick, want to thank you for being here. Patrick Blanchard, uh, you're the president, I think, of that, that Grange. And I'm, I keep referring to it as the Mingo Grange. I just want to make sure folks understand that there's multiple chapters of Granges here. Correct. So I'd yeah. like to open the, the show today, and, and this is, uh, I think, uh, an important way to start this, is maybe start out with the historical piece and for whoever wants to, to kind of join this conversation. But as I understand way back during the 1929 period, um, there was a need for something on the rural landscape. Now I'm trying to imagine as we're sitting here and I'm looking around at all these artifacts that date back to the 30s, 40s and 50s. Um, it was a time when now we probably couldn't recognize. So who wants to start a conversation about the history of the Grange? Anybody? Well, the Grange was started back at, I think, 28 here in mm -hmm. North Carolina. Mm -hmm. But Mingo Grange was started in, I believe, 47. Mm -hmm. uh, Westbrook, which is on the banner there, mm -hmm. was started a little earlier. We were actually sponsored by Westbrook. Mm -hmm. And in the 40s and 50s, there was an emphasis on rural life and you know they did such as community beautification projects working with the schools immunization uh, you know things we're still doing today mm -hmm. and uh, certainly in the 50s they, they branched out into cooperatives they were trying to get telephone service into the community mm -hmm. they were working with south river and other groups to get electricity into the community uh, our grange worked with the local high school and built the community building, which was at that time a uh, agriculture building mm -hmm. for the schoolhouse. And so when the school was closed, we got the building back. And so we've used it now as a community center. That's part of what the Grange did. It was community related and it still is today. Ronald, I, I, want, to, I want to use your window to view from here. Um, you recall, I'm sure, vividly, 47 and maybe a little further back, what critically, what was that critical thing that made the Grange so important at that time particularly for that community? Well, I remember when I was a little boy, little boy, I remember when the, uh, our community building was being built. My grandfather was one of the carpenters that went over and uh, helped build it. His name was Bill Henry Lambert. Uh, he had a son which happened to be the president of the FFA at that time, that particular year. And uh, I remember vividly when I 
standing down below watching them build the, the top over the roof, the roof part of it, where they laid the blocks and then they built the, the top of it. He was one of the carpenters that did it. Uh, Orange Campbell Jackson happened to be a guy that helped him do that, and they eventually went down to Fort Bragg and started building barracks down there. But uh, in that particular time, the grange was laid out to the farmer. They they tried to help the farmer get laws passed, uh, get medical help down in the rural areas, and uh, and then they tried to help the youth come along with building a place so they'd have an agricultural building which the FFA met in. They had a complete shop there to build woodworking product uh, projects and all that. Uh, it was a heart of the community. And I might say it's still the heart of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, Mingo used to be a thriving little area. Mm -hmm. And of course, as time went on, uh, we lost our identity. We lost our school. Uh, the only thing we have left now is our community building from the original time and Mingo Church, that's it. Uh, you'll see Mingo's sign, name still on uh, the maps when they're showing the weather forecast once in a while. But that's all you see is the word Mingo. Mm -hmm. It's strange about me how they find they still know where we're at. But uh, the Grange has been a large part of the growth of our community. Ronald, with, with that with that said, you can also see out of your window looking back at people that used mules and farming that was small operations back then. It was literally a cluster of families mm -hmm. that made or, or did not make that farm. That's right. And most of the adults then the parents then, they raised their labor. That's why families were so large. Uh, they didn't couldn't hire outside help to come in like they do now. Uh, they had to have labor that belonged to them. So most of them had large families. Uh, a family of six, like my mother came out of, was really a small family. Uh, her grandfather, the family was 12. Uh, her great grandfather, who came up, was down in South Carolina, uh, his family was 18. Wow! So as time went on, the families kept getting smaller because they didn't need the labor for one thing, mm -hmm. and the farms kept getting smaller too. I was raised on a 28-acre farm. Now uh, you were talking about tractors a while ago and mules and stuff. Mm -hmm. I can remember the mules pulling the the plows. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were a horse, we had horses. Most of the farmers had mules, but granddaddy always liked horses for some reason. And that's what he had when I came along. Mm -hmm. uh, we had two horses. Uh, the first tractor we ever got, uh, he went off and bought a used farm all cub. I know you know what a farm all cub is. That's just, that was the first real farm all tractor that was put out. Uh, we never was able to come up with the 140, which was high end. Mm -hmm. A high end farmer had that. Mm -hmm. But we had that little cub. I said, if you put it wide open and you put it in gear and jerk your foot off the clutch, you might could pull a wet sitting in off of a <laughs> That was debatable. But you could do more work with a horse in a day than you could with that tractor time you got it set up and got it in the field to be able to start working with. You could already have quite a bit already done with a, with a horse or a mule. Uh, but that little cub had its, had its place. We pulled a section higher with it. It did beautiful work. Had one bottom cloud. Now I see tractors that's got 20 bottom clouds and 24 bottom clouds. And I think, oh Lord, we've come a long ways. But the farmer's come a long ways now. But a farmer couldn't make it on 28 acres now. So, it, so the Grange, when we look, the historical connection of the Grange was vital in 1947 and before 
for North Carolina. That's right. We're we're also going to talk about uh, in this coming up uh, part of the show. Uh, we're going to talk about the vitality of the Grange today. There seems to be um, a need to have something that brings communities together. And Patrick, I'm going to segue to you. We've got about a minute in this part, but I want you to continue this conversation. Um, the the Grange, looking at it, and and then looking at what you see from the Grange, what you're seeing now uh, as president of the Grange. Um, what particularly attracted you to say, you know, I want to help these guys bring that community back together? Well, I think just the overall cultural climate, um, we've kind of gotten away from local community. And, you know, like we were talking about earlier, I don't uh, pretend to be smarter than or more intelligent than anybody else. But if you just do a little bit of thinking, thinking ahead a little bit, you can, you can see scenarios and situations to where you might have to lean on your neighbor and you know, bringing, bringing the community together, knowing who you can rely on and who um, is gonna be able to work good together, that's gonna be very important. Well, and, and I think one of the things that, that I, I hear you saying too is that the Grange is part of the kind of, and I'll use, it might be too strong a word here, but I'll use, it's part of the soul of the community, so to speak. Right. It's, it speaks the language of that individual community. Well, I think Ronald talked about it. We lost our identity. You know, we, we need to get our identity back. You know, if, if you don't know where you come from, where are you going? I think one of the things that, um, that strikes me in this conversation is, as we move it forward is, is that whole idea of identity, of character, of something to belong to. The rural landscape has changed, uh, uh, Ronald, as you mentioned, drastically. Our, our societal expectations has changed. When we come back from this break, we're gonna take a break here in about 10 seconds, but when we come back from this break, I wanna kind of get your thoughts on how this can positively impact a community, how the Grange can make a significant difference in any community, especially on the rural landscape. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. Computer viruses, malware, and ransomware are out there. They're dangerous, and they can steal your identity and damage your equipment. Star Communications is now offering Protect IQ. This service adds an extra layer of protection to every device connected to your network, working quietly in the background. Star can help you protect yourself from the inside out with Protect IQ. Call Star today and take advantage of this free service when you sign up for whole home Wi Fi with Star Communications. How can your friend save you money? It's easy. Refer a relative, coworker, neighbor, or friend to Star Communications. Friend signs up for high-speed internet service. Friend's new account is confirmed. Friend gives your name to our service representative as the one who referred them to Star. You receive a $30 internet credit. It's just that simple. And even better, receive a $30 internet credit for every referral that results in a new confirmed account. High-speed internet from Star Communications. Refer a friend today. Ladies and gentlemen, J.W. Simmons here, your host. The name of the show is We Should Know. We're talking about the Grange, particularly the Grange in Mingo. And we're talking with Wayne Wrench, Patrick Blanchard, and Ronald Ennis. And they're not only Grange people, but you are leading the Grange. I'm on, so I don't have to get into titles, but Patrick is... Uh, as president up there, you and these guys are kind of leaning uh, into the storm, so to speak, to get folks to understand the importance of the Grange today. So as we look at that, we talked a bit about the, the character of a community, um, what a community is. Tell us that just from your perspective, what attracted you uh, individually to say, I'm willing to get involved in this. Was there some trigger that did that? Uh, did one of these guys, uh, did, did Ronald take his cane there and push you into it? What's, how did that work? 
Uh, well, <clears throat> I, I am, like you said, I am the president, but it was, it was not something that I desired to be president. It was uh, just an opportunity that came up and uh, some of the members had faith in me and said, well, why don't you be president? And I said, well, I've not really considered that, but you know, I'll, I'll try my best. So yeah. here I am. We did a great time job. Yeah, I was just thinking to say everybody else said so that. Kind of was him. Right? Kind of <laughs> was him with the cane. <laughs> yeah. But no, no. Uh, well, I was. Um, I had a particularly uh, good family that I was raised in, and and I know uh, how lucky and blessed I am to have have such a good family, and um, just drawing from that i know how important it is to have connections with with good people and what it you know done for me in my development and and what it does for me as a an adult mm -hmm. and um you know with the climate that we've been talking about that we live in our culture or the the way things that have been going in recent years um we we're going to need to be able to lean on each other and it's it's about bettering our community and and our community interests being able to voice those in ways that maybe you can't do alone or individually but as a group it means more and maybe even getting a little political but i mean it, it would mean more to someone if a group comes to you with a concern versus just an individual and and being the, the Grange being a community organization, the community can get together and discuss the issues that they have or the the desires that they have and be able to present that in in a way that maybe the the point is is heard better. That, it's, that it's the Grange, guys, it's the Grange today, yeah, obviously the environment's different, but is the Grange today hugely different in what it wants to accomplish as opposed to what it was in 1947. Yeah. Did, it, are you still looking to accomplish those same goals or has it changed some? It is and it isn't. It is and it isn't. Right. Uh, if, it, uh, if we go back to 1866, I believe, when Mr. Kelly founded the group and um, what they were trying to do was improve agriculture. He came to the South after the war uh, sent down by, I believe, the commission, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, mm -hmm. and he found that what was going on was backwoods and backwards and not up to modern standards. And so the Grange wanted to work on improving agriculture. And then the secretive part, you know, we used to have secret handshakes and yeah. passwords and codes and oh, stuff, yeah. was that they were fighting the railroads, trying to get a better rate. Uh, so if Patrick tried to, to ship his crops, he gets a higher rate, but if 20 of us in the Grange go together, we rent a whole car, we get a better rate. It was a cooperative kind of thing. Hmm. Uh, they were fighting for rural issues like, um, they were fighting for fertilizer. Fertilizer prices were exorbitant. Railroad prices were exorbitant. Uh, rural free delivery was another big thing, which is, you know, we discussed Marion Butler, mm -hmm. and he's kind of sort of known as the father of rural free delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, think about Mayberry RFD what Absolutely. it is and you know in the 20s 30s and 40s it kind of shifted from that to more of a community organization trying to keep the rural ways alive trying to keep the rural traditions alive trying to improve those folks in the rural areas which led to cooperatives and telephones and power and such as that well they were better in their community yes mm -hmm. better and that's what we want to do today we want to keep our communities connected and we, we want to make them better. Well, you, we want uh, to keep them. Patrick, you work in the, the healthcare field. So one of the big issues now that the society and individuals is looking at is this whole uh, social psychological, I call it uh, parameter that's going on, trying to create a space where people feels you know, comfortable, where, where they feel like they belong and that kind of right. thing. Is that harder in your mind to do in a rural landscape as opposed to an urban setting, say, for example, Fayetteville, Cumberland County uh, versus Mingo? I think so. I think it is. Yes. 
I mean, um, so with with you being rural, I mean, it, it's harder to get people to come together. If it's more urban, they're, they're, people are already close, you know, that kind of thing. I mean, it, but then again, you think about it, um, in, in rural communities, you, you kind of do, you know, go, have have neighbor to neighbor interactions maybe a little more than you do in urban. So, I mean, I don't know. Thinking about it again, it it's hard to say. I, I think I think it's just a mindset of the people. To be honest, I mean, if you if you've got uh, a people with a certain mindset, then, then maybe they can get more accomplished or get together more than than others. So, I, I mean, it really it's it's trying to find like minded people. I mean, and, and if and you can find that in rural or urban areas, I guess. Wayne, one of the things that strikes me too, and you were talking a bit about the history, uh, this idea of, of bringing people together. How do you reach? And of course, you know, to, to some of us sitting here today, uh, Patrick is a real young man. But how do you reach young people? How do you reach people that are in their twenties, that are in their, uh, you know, what I call the professional development of their life? Because I know the Grange, from reading, was instrumental in the 4-H, uh, which is a huge right. organization in the high school. So it's not that the Grange has been not somehow engaged with that. How has that changed? Well, you know, when we started with the Grange, we discovered they had a tight bond with 4-H and Future Farmers, yeah. FFA. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, a lot of us being old future farmers, you know, we fell right into this. This was not a problem. But communicating with the younger generation, Patrick's one of the younger ones my daughter's in. She's 27, 28. And uh, there's some of our youngest ones. The Grange has a youth program that they developed for the children of the Grangers. And they're kind of brought up into it. I hate to say indoctrinated, but they're brought up in the Grange that way and they learn the traditions, they learn it. And it's like being in the future farmers in high school. It kind of ingrains in you mm -hmm. when you're young and a little impressionable. You're doing the ceremonies. Uh, you're learning the importance of it. You're doing the contest. You're, you're, you're networking, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I think that's what's lost on us because it's hard to get the younger ones in because they don't they're not joiners anymore they don't they're loners yeah 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 what Ron, the, which the whisper grange yeah. you know that they never dissolved but no. the mingo no. that we we were dissolved for many years before we got it right. we uh, faded out back together yes. three years ago so that that played a role too you know the ron i, I want to switch to you with, with this observation is it is it part of what gentlemen our genre of age uh, is it part of our need to so to speak get out of the way so these younger folks can get in and you were there when the Grange was involving the future farmers which was young people and that kind of thing uh, just give us a, a few thoughts on that we've got a couple minutes before we go to break oh uh. like I said when I was young I was young I was young little. Uh, I was a small boy. Uh, my grandfather was in the Grange. All the, all the farmers around Mingo was in the Grange. And it was like church. I mean, they dressed up to go to Grange meetings, suits and ties and, and, and real neat. And it became an organization for Mingo. And it was not real tight fit. I mean, I go to Corinth Church. My family grew up there. They were involved in it. Spring Branch Church was. Mingo, which is there. Baptist Chapel, which was in Dismal. They were part of, of the Grange. Uh, all the churches around Mount Zion, all of them. And they would get together on, on their Sundays and their Wednesday night, Sunday night. But when the Grange meeting come by, it was an important meeting for them. Mm -hmm. And I grew up in that, that style of, of, of meetings you know mm -hmm. but as time went on the grange kind of faded out for some reason because of non-participation is what it was so we need we not only need the farmers around our community to be part of the grange but we need the youth of our community 
community to be part of DuGrange the because they're our future. Whether they like it or not at a particular time, they're the future of Mingo. And Mingo is, like so many things, uh, we've lost our identity kindly. So the young people are going somewhere else to, to do, do the things like we did when we were young. Mm -hmm. uh, I pray every, I try to pray every night that our neighborhood and our community would start being tight like it was at that time. We're going we're gonna to take a break when we come back. When I want to uh, shift to you and, and talk about how do we create a structure that can not only enhance youth wanting to be a part of it, but younger people uh, moving the Grange forward with the obvious community philosophy that Patrick talked about and that we've discussed. I think that's going to be a critical piece of this conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back in a moment. Stay tuned. We should know it's on the air. Providing fewer commutes, more backyard offices, and crystal clear meetings. Providing less, uh, you froze up and more presence in your presentations. Providing a better internet experience. Providing possible. You're out for an evening on the town. Finally a chance to relax and forget that you left your front door completely unlocked. Fortunately, you just installed a security system from Star Communications. With just your cell phone, you can check on your house, lock it down, light it up, and get back to relaxing. He forgot to put Buster in his crate. Unfortunately, we can't help with that. Security and automation from Star Communications. Call today to find out more. Welcome to Cork and Brew Roseboro, where you can enjoy your favorite coffee, craps, smoothies, bakery items, sandwiches, and select beer and wines while reconnecting with friends and family. Sit down and enjoy the experience. Come on by and give us a try. The average American household has 17 devices connected to the internet. With more and more devices able to get online, you may need to increase your internet speed. Call Star Communications today and let us help you select the package that's right for you. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being with us today. We Should Know is on there. I'm J.W. Simmons, your host. We're coming to you on Star Communications TV Channel 16, simulcast on WCLN Radio. We're talking about the Grange. We're talking first and foremost with Ronald Ennis. Ronald, thank you for being with us. I'm kind of reintroducing everybody so we'll make sure they know who they're talking to here. And we're talking to Wayne Wrench. Wayne, thank you for being with us. And of course, uh, uh, Patrick, I uh, want to thank you for being here. Patrick uh, Blanchard, who is the current uh, president of the Grange in Mingo. Uh, Wayne, you're also former president, so I don't know you know, how this works, but he's already gone a certain way. You, got, you picked the stick up. And so right. as we were talking on break, and we, we got us a great conversation on the break, um, the, the Grange being somewhat, and I use this word, and help me steer me as, as we're moving with this, but I use the word that the Grange is somewhat like a cooperative. Wayne, how much is it like a cooperative? And if you're a member of the Grange, how much say so do you have in the Grange? And what does that membership mean? Well, everybody gets about the same amount of say. I mean, it's an equal opportunity organization. And when we were founded in the 1860s, one of the principal things was that ladies were invited. It was not a, a, a segregated group. It was not just men only. It was men and women from the very inception. And we have offices that only ladies can hold. Um, so we have been diverse from our very inception. But uh, as far as that goes, you know, the Grange itself, we work a lot like a cooperative because we, we as a body, work with different sponsors and we get discounts on things, you know, and we, we get uh, the Grange insurance, we get a discount on Grange insurance mm -hmm. because we're members. Uh, but in our local organization, we work together and everybody's pretty much an equal part of the cog. If they show up, we'll give them something to do. They're not going to be lacking. <laughs> That's right. So, but the grain, the, but, but the, to your point, uh, Patrick, the Grange is much more than uh, insurance benefit or an insurance break. I think a lot of people have the Grange. If, yeah. if they hear that, that's just another insurance company. Right. This is far different than a typical insurance company. 
Right. The as far as the insurance. Yeah. I mean, we really don't have anything to do with that anymore. Right. The Grange yeah. has spun that off as kind of a separate organization now. Used to, you had to buy Grange insurance, I believe, to be a Granger. I think you're right. Uh, kind of like the Woodman. And, um, you know, when you joined the Woodman, you got you had an insurance policy and you got a fancy tool. That was the on. expectation. <laughs> yeah. And uh, the Grange was kind of the same way, but it's spun off now. And But, but we still get benefits from that. And, right. But it's more that community identity that we keep right. talking about. So I want to kind of spin back uh, and talk a bit about this. How do we introduce and encourage younger folks like this young guy and even younger to not only be part of the Grange, but to inspire others to be part of the Grange? And and let's face it, you know, you, you work with Cumberland County Schools. You, you see adolescent behavior. You know, you work in public health or in health, I don't want to say public health, you work in health, uh, Patrick, so you see a lot of that. So let's kind of take that conversation uh, to another level and help folks say, well, maybe if I can't get into Mingo Grange and I'm listening to this show and, and I'm in the southern part of the county of Sampson or I'm in Bladen County or one of the eight or nine counties that we cover, maybe they don't have a Grange in that county. What? Well, I don't want to backtrack, yeah, but, sure. but you, you uh, gave uh, Ronald a question earlier about, you know, maybe the older generation is moving sure. out to give the mm -hmm. newer generations an opportunity. I, I just don't see how that would be the way to go. Um, we, we need that wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need those older members to stay around so that they can uh, influence and, and, you know, let the, the newer members or the younger members know it's like, hey, we've tried that. This is what happened. It's not a good result. You need to go another way. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we need that. The whole uh, piece of history. Right, right, exactly. And uh, to your point about people not being able to, um, or, or not having a local Grange, maybe they should just come visit. Just, you know, find out when our no, meetings are. Our meetings on second Thursday of every month. And if, if you want to come visit our Grange, we'll be happy to have you. And then, you can kind of ask us questions, what, how it's set up, what we do. We can give you contacts and maybe you can think about starting a Grange in your area, you know, if that's so your desire, you know. Yeah, I think Ronald, he makes a good point as it relates to the, to the wisdom part because the reality is this. We literally, you, as it relates to the Grange, know some things you really don't want to do anymore or you don't really want to try anymore you can tell them why they don't need to do that mm -hmm. now the big problem we have Wayne with that is if folks will listen sometimes it will save a lot of problems am I correct well you you know as well as I do we've all made our mistakes as Absolutely. we came along now I'd hate to go back and have to go through those mistakes again mm -hmm. so I've tried to tell my children uh, hey, you might not want to think about that now. You know, you might want to go another way. Sometimes I make them mad when I try to guide them in the right way, and that's youth. I was the same way you were too. No, sure. Uh, you know, Papa tell me you don't need to do that. Well, I know I'm 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 a grown man, Papa. Yep. Uh, you know, I got Absolutely. family of my own now. Absolutely. We've all been there. Invincible. That's Invincible. Common. Bulletproof. Yeah. But uh. The youth today think different than we do. Right. I mean, they have a complete different life. Uh, their generation is completely different. You and I were talking earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, of course, my papa, my grandfather, they'd lock him up today <laughs> because he he believed in raising a child under the flag. Mm -hmm. You know, apply the stripes mm -hmm. till he gets to see the stars. And he'll realize he's doing wrong. We can't do that now. And they'll put you in jail for mm -hmm. the first thing. Uh, maybe we need to go back to some of those ways of controlling children. Uh, I'm not saying we need to beat children up and, and break bones and all that. That's not what I'm saying at all. But children today are not being raised to feather themselves in the future. Uh, to raise their own children, I might say. But uh, you and I know a little bit about that, more so than, than Patrick does. Mm -hmm. Patrick was raised in a different generation mm -hmm. too. But uh, as Patrick said, uh, we definitely need youth. 
uh, and you talk about me having wisdom, so, uh, Patrick really don't know what he's talking about. I don't have a lot of wisdom, <laughs> but I have a lot of stories. There you go. Uh, but I do know a few things. I have remembered a few things over to you that I can help them out with. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I might lead them in the wrong way too, mm -hmm. but that's just trying something new. Mm -hmm. uh, like right now, we're trying to do a lot of things to our building, our, the grange is, mm -hmm. and we're trying to spruce it up a little bit, make it more attractive, and uh, we've made a start at it. Uh, we can't do everything at one time because we don't have the money, but we can do a little bit at a time. Uh, and that's something that our forefathers started. Now it's our chance to bring it alive again. Wayne, how, how do you take that idea of legacy and move it in such a way that it's still viable, as Patrick was pointing out, that it's still important and, and viable? And how does the Grange do that and continue to build and just inform folks that the Grange is not just an insurance company, although a lot of people still think it is, but it's a whole different community collective. Uh, moving people forward on the legacy issues, one of those things that more or less comes with age as well. You begin to realize the importance. Uh, you know, my grandfather told me stories that his grandfather told him mm -hmm. from, the, from the war between states. And he was a first-hand account, so I was getting it through one person. Mm -hmm. And today, you know, those stories are lost. We don't do that anymore. And so what we're doing at Mingo with the building, we're trying to preserve that one central place. And, and we did preserve a scrapbook and some other things on the building of it. And we talk about, we have, we sponsor the Mingo reunion every year for the old school. And we took that flag back up and run with it. And so we're trying to do these things that promote what happened in the past as a way to look to the future. They built this, what are we gonna build? They built the, the phone company, they built the, the electrical company, they built the schools, they built the roads, they did all these things that are already here and my kids have no recollection of it. You know, my granddaddy used to beat stuff into you about that, you know, we did this, we did that. I remember them doing that. Mm -hmm. Those stories are gone. So it's hard to, relate it to the children now, I think. It's, it's just more difficult. It's, it, if we look at it from a, a public education point of view, is this part of the history that should be touched on in the, in the classroom to teach youth that this is one of the organizations that was vital and important throughout the rural landscape and, by the way, still exists? I don't think it would hurt. No. I mean, like Sampson County history, how much did you learn in school? You know, you didn't know Cornwallis came through. You didn't know Sherman I came through. Had no idea. Uh, until you got older and read about it on your own. And I, I, the Grange has had a big role in that. You'll be talking about the Farmers Alliances and all these other things that had a big play, as Mr. Rose talked about with us earlier. And, you know, like I say, it's just forgotten. We don't realize the achievements of going from a crank telephone to a cell phone on our hip all the time. But these are the kinds of things uh, Patrick, when we come back, I'd like to touch on this if, if we have time. Uh, we're coming up on our, our last part of the show, but I, I want to kind of tie this together with, with this idea that, that Wayne just pointed out, that you guys look back and you see this and you see how it can fit, but the, you know, Ronald, the things you're talking about now might not fit as far as the dynamic of engineering and technology but the basic principles are still there. Yeah, so right. I want to kind of explore that a little bit when we come back and then go wherever we need, hit some of those places that we didn't get to and uh, we'll have time to touch on that. Ladies and gentlemen, stay tuned. We're coming up on the last part of the show. Uh, just a very interesting conversation about an organization that's really vital in communities, bringing pe people together in a very positive and informed way. We'll be back in a moment, call a friend. Fishers, it's not just about fashion. It's about exceptional service. Experience top-notch customer care and find your perfect look. Visit Fishers today and feel the difference.
Experiencing slow internet? If you have a fast internet package, the problem is most likely your wireless router. With more devices using Wi-Fi, your wireless router may not be able to deliver the speed and coverage you need. We now have the leading solution to enhance your internet experience. Using small devices in a mesh network, these Wi-Fi appliances cover just about any size home so that all your devices can operate to their fullest potential. Whole home Wi-Fi from Star Communications. Get the most out of your internet connection. If you run a business, you need sales. To get sales, you need customers. To get customers, you need exposure. Let our team of experts craft and produce the perfect video ad to reach your intended audience while making the most of your advertising dollars. Call 1-800-706-6538 or visit starcom.net to contact our Star Communications production team and get your business moving to the next level. Welcome back, folks. We Should Know is on there. Coming up on the last part of the show today, I want to remind you, you can reach us at we should know edu at gmail.com. That's we should know edu at gmail.com. Or drop us a card, a letter if you want to, to Post Office Box 1482, Clinton, North Carolina, 28329. That is we should know and just drop us that card. We appreciate your input, comments on shows we have had, people that's been on our show. Your input is very important as we map the road forward with each and every week bringing you some more information and education that we feel is useful and will be beneficial to you. And one of those things that is critically beneficial to you is communities because you're part of the community and the communities that we're talking about now, the communities that the Grange empowers. And I wanted to kind of introduce that as the uh, last part of the show is because the Grange has seen, as you read about it, and I was listening to you guys, it's an empowerment tool for communities. And I don't want us to miss that point. So let's kind of wrap here uh, some things that we may have missed. We've talked a bit about the importance of youth coming together. We've talked about the history of the Grange. We've talked about where it goes from here. Uh, just to Patrick's point, Ronald, I don't want to leave out the importance of senior citizens in our communities because now we have, you know, Office of Aging here in the county, most counties do, to try to, you know, nurture and, and look after senior citizens. It, how, let's get back to that balance thing and then we'll go uh, kind of wherever you guys want to go, but you have to balance it between senior citizens and bringing youth in. And, and senior citizens, we need youth bad. We need them around. We, if you can't get to the, to the spigot to get a cup of water, you might need to ask one of them to hand That's it to right. you. So, so where do we go from here? Who wants to pick that up? Well, I mean, and we've touched on it a little bit, but uh, I, like we were talking about in, in one of the breaks, you know, the, the youth today, I, th I think that they have a different relationship with the word sacrifice. Mm -hmm. I, th I think the youth today are really comfortable. They, you know, why, why do something uncomfortable whenever, you know, you're already comfortable? Um, you know, the, the generations of, you know, the past, they had to build what we have now. They didn't have it. They, they had this, I mean, w whenever you sacrifice, you're sacrificing something for the future. And they've already done their part. It's like, what? so what's the youth coming up today? What, what are they going to do for their future generations? What are they willing to sacrifice right now? It doesn't seem a whole lot because it's not just the Grange that's hurting with youth membership. I mean, it's every civic organization and, and it's really difficult to, to really draw them in. So, I mean, we, we've got a task of, of getting it, you know, laid out to them and getting it, get, enticing them to come join and say, hey, we need you. Wayne, and I'm gonna go down the list here with, with each one of you. Give us, give us your thoughts on, on the points that uh, Patrick is making here is that not only do we need the youth, we also need to, as far as the grain, just to encourage people to look at what Mingo's doing, look at what Westbrook's doing. Look at your area. Do you have that collective mentality in your community? Do you even know who your neighbor is in many cases? Uh, right. Ronald, you and I can go back and say, we used to know where every house was, who lived there, and a bit about their ancestry. Now I can't say that. Uh, what, what are you, what's your thoughts as we 
kind of come to closure here. Before the show, you, we were playing around with the old dial telephone. Yes. And I was dialing my grandmother's phone number from memory and asking her what she had for supper. My grandmother had that telephone on a table in the hallway with a 20-foot cord where she could get to the window. And she would watch everything in the community. She knew everybody from her house to the grocery barn, which was about four then. Yeah. Now you look at the GIS map, there's 200, 300 people living between where we are and the grocery barn. Right. And it's a dynamic, it's changed a lot. I met a young lady at the Senior Citizen Center uh, this summer. I started going to eat with them some on Fridays. And she was from Maryland originally. And I said, how long have you been here, dear? And she says, oh, about 10, 12 years. I said, how have we not met? You know, and, and there's so many of us that we stay in our own little circles we don't meet anymore. Right. Church used to be the place to go. Mm -hmm. School was a, a community center. You saw everybody there. You went to Roses and Dunn on Saturday in the summer. You saw everybody there. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, there's so many places. And I think that's where we are as a society. There's just so many options. And I don't think that it's really the kids' fault. There's not been a world war to bond us together like the greatest generation. Mm -hmm. There's not been a Vietnam that bonded these boys together when they went off to fight. You know, we've not had that bonding issue. And, and like you say, say things have got a little softer, it's got a little easier. Why should I do that? And I understand it completely. But uh, I think the Grange is a great organization. It, you know, we have discussed going into not being preppers, but being a little more prepared, mm -hmm. having things in case the power goes out. Mm -hmm. and, and look what's happened in Western North Carolina. That's right. You okay. know, had we been, had we had that, would we be prepared? Would we have water resources? As a community. We have food. Right. At the community or even the personal level, just something at the house. You know, most of us couldn't make it a week. And I think the Grange helps promote that rural sense of identity and self-reliance, and we should be a little more prepared for things. We should be uh, able to do things for ourselves And not take things for granted. Right. And you know, if, if Patrick lives a mile and a half from me, and, and I know there's an emergency and he gets in touch with me, I'm gonna go down there to help him if I can get there. And Ronald lives two miles and I can get to him if something was going on, you know? and. That's the connection that the Grange brings. It's just like church, it's just like school. It bonds us together with a common theme. Very good. And I think that's where we are as a community. We need that bonding to go, you know, when we were kids, you joined the fire department. There you go. You know, yeah. Ron, I, I want to touch with you. You mentioned gone. something a while ago about telling stories. Well, one of the things that's important to people, and, and I was reading this piece uh, just recently, a social psychological piece about it was not, it's not so much about what you buy or what you own, it's the experience you have, you the relationship. So we're talking about an experience here. The Grange is an experience. That's and right. if nothing else, would you not say that it's worth looking at, it's worth visiting? And I hear all of you saying that door is open. The door is open all the time. As uh, Patrick said, we meet the second Thursday and each month at seven o'clock um, we're not we don't have a large attendance we'd like to have more but what we'd really like to do is get the ffa at midway to recognize us and start getting their uh students that's in coming through now we would really like for them to get involved in our grange to not only teach them about the Grange, but to teach them where the FFA came from. Our, our Grange does more than just meet. We, uh, we found out, uh, I don't know how long ago it's been, maybe back in the spring, that the, our senior citizens was gonna be dissolved. Well, that's the last thing we had going from me to, uh, it had got down to two people. And since I'm the old fa white father of the crowd, they assigned me the job of start going to the senior citizen, me and my wife, and seeing if we could help them, not go over and take over, but help the senior citizen 
grow a little bit. Now, I can't pat myself on the shoulder for all of it, but Miss uh, Lily Williams is the head person there, works for the Department of, Department of Aging. And my wife and I started going. There was two people going when we started. And uh, we worked hard along with Miss Lily, and we had help from other people too. But I think we got about 19 on the roll now. Now, all of them's not there every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that we meet, but there are 10 or 12 that comes. Some come one time, some will come another, some will come another. It's not always the same crowd, but there's a base that's always the same crowd. Mm -hmm. There's about eight of us that is the base, and we're always there unless we have a doctor's appointment. You know how that is. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, uh, we've got the, the senior citizens moving in another direction now. Uh, one of our members, L.C. Honeycutt, found an old scrapbook. It was one of those old picture albums. You remember the old picture album where Grandma had and she had all of her pictures? Well, she found an old picture album. I'm going to let you take it over from there. Oh, well. L.C. gave us that, and it was in building the community building in the 50s, the Grange itself. Mm -hmm. And they entered that for a national contest, and they won. Uh, and it was building that building. And in 1955, they raised over $30,000 to build a state-of-the-art shop. It was said it was one of the nicest in North Carolina. Um, and that's the kind of things the Grange reaches out and does, is community projects and self-sacrificing a little bit and thinking of the larger body. Absolutely. And I, I, we, I wanna, I, we got a, about a minute coming up here before we got to go to closure. Um, Patrick, I want to uh, kind of go to you and uh, look at closure here and, and anything that we've missed. It's clear that we're talking about an organization that is about communities. We're talking about an organization that brings people together. And right now, as we sit here and we know what's happened in the western part of the state with uh, Herrick and Helene, it, this, this is a perfect example of why communities have to come together. Uh, right. You got 30 seconds here to close. Well, I mean, you you are your first responders. I mean, yes, the, the government, federal government, state government is there to help now, but it's a week later. What did you do those first few days? You had to help, you, you had to rely on your neighbors. I mean, and if you don't know your neighbors, who, I mean, who are you gonna go to? You might not know who's missing. That's right. And, and that's what's happening up there. I want to thank each of you guys for taking time to sit down and talk to us today. It's a subject that we could talk for probably wrong months about, but it's important that we get this out. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing you again next week right here, and may God bless. for tuning in to this week's episode of We Should Know with host J.W. Simmons. If you have a question, comment, or suggestion regarding this or any episode, please send your emails to we should know edu at gmail.com. And remember to tune in every Tuesday at 2.30 for another informative episode of We Should Know.